Right. This is probably one of the key things on a commercial fishery. And it's something that whenever I go fishing on any fishery, it's the first thing I look for. And it is peg management and getting that code right that's going to effectively put more fish in your net. So we're here today at Makins. And this is Lake Two. And this, for me, is a classic commercial fishery situation. So look behind me, okay? Here on the bank, along this bank, see the guy putting the fish in his landing net there? The match is about 15 minutes old. And the anglers are every other peg. And they've got around about, what, 25 meters or so to the island there in the middle. So there's a lot of water between them and the island. And they've all got a decision to make. They've all got a decision to make. Where are they going to fish during the day? Are they going to be drawn naturally to one place or another? Is there an area where you can start and nick a couple of fish and then move to? So making the right decisions for every single one of these anglers today is what's going to catch them more fish. Now, one thing that Rob and I have learned on the edge massively is managing the space that your peg is in, managing the space that's in front of you. So I'm going to give you a classic example, okay? The first few pegs here, the first angler here is on a method feeder to the island. The next angler is started on a short pole and the next angler is on the method feeder to the island. And the guy on the short pole has had three fish already and either side of him on the feeder is actually yet to catch one. Now, naturally, what happens is on this sort of match, a lot of these anglers, the majority, have cast their feeder across to the island. So you imagine a situation where this lake was really quiet. There was nobody here. Nobody, everybody was sat nicely and then all in, bosh, 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 method feeders went crashing out to the island. But this guy, one in, he's tapped a few pellets in, in the quieter water where he's got no competition from anybody else. And sure enough, the fish were happy to oblige. Now, for me, he's made the right decision. But if this angler here, technically on the end peg, if he'd have started short, I might have been tempted as the second angler to create my end peg and start to the island. So I'm actually using the anglers around me to make the decision. I'm not going, oh, quick, get in the water, feed all my different pegs. I'm thinking about where I'm going to fish. Now, I'm not saying this guy who's fishing short is going to catch all day because sure enough, as he starts catching, no doubt the anglers around him will come in. But then if you just pan around here, a great example of making the most of your space. So this angler here, He's got a lot of room. He's in the car park, not an area that is often favoured, but he's got plenty of space. Now, we've spoken to him before the start. We've done a demo today. And rather than cast his method feeder out, rather than ship out on a long pole, he's literally started at five metres on a short pole. He's thrown some hard pellets in. This is his third car, at least. I think he might have been one point. So, And we're matches 15 minutes old. And he's left all of this space around here the camera just pans around, you'll see all of this space across to the island. So he's left all of that water that he's got to go out there. So he's literally going to keep these fish coming. Now, if it's a day when they're really feeding, when they just want the food, they're going to keep coming to his food short. And he might end up catching 200 pounds on short pole. If it's a day when 60 pounds going to win, he's had a great start, and then he can effectively move across to his open water. In the meantime, the method boys across here, I've only seen one fish caught. Now, like I say, on another day, and on the matches that I often fish, we almost know about that. So what people are doing is you might have, along that bank nowadays on a big qualifier, seven out of eight people will start on a short pole. That's when I would start on a method feeder because naturally my space is where nobody else has gone. So it's not just about reading your own peg, it's about looking around you deciding what other people are doing and find the space. That's where the carp are gonna feed with the most confidence. And we all know that when carp feed, they really have it. So find that space, you will get the best out of your commercial fishery peg. For the most in-depth videos about fishing on the internet, you can become a member at www.anglingedge.co.uk. Sign up today, you get all the new videos and access to all the past videos as well. And you're in luck. You can go on YouTube, The Edge YouTube channel. And now if you love watching your content on YouTube, you can become a member on YouTube instead and watch all the videos from the past and going forward, the best fishing videos on the internet.
So, Lee's been talking about the early part of a match, starting in the right place, making the, mar the right decisions early on in the session. It makes a huge difference. But, we're right at the end of the session now, end of the match, this is when it's time to make your money. This is where you've got to end up on, a, on an area of your swim that you know you can, you can make hay while the sun shines. You can make it pay dividends. And quite often when it's carp fishing, that is that area that you've kept nice and quiet when you've managed your feed throughout the session. And that might be either putting more bait in as you build up that peg, or it might be not putting any bait in there at all. So have a look over there. We've got an angler over there, He's just netting a fish. Now he has had a fantastic run. You can see that he's got a couple of spare pegs. Perfect for margin fishing or short pole. It's a really miserable, wet, rainy day today. And what has, what has happened, and it happens quite a lot when you get these weather conditions, the fish just sit a little bit deeper. Now, when you've got some space on your side of the lake, i.e. a couple of spare pegs, those fish will want to sit on your side of the lake, but you've got to read the weather conditions. So, a lot of people automatically think, I've got a brilliant margin there, I'm going to catch loads of fish in the margin. Today though, with the weather conditions that we've got, those fish are sitting deeper. That angler there, he's having an amazing run in this last hour, fishing five metres. On the bottom, straight in front of him, it's about six foot deep there. Those fish are sitting in that deeper water, still feeding a lot of bait. You've got to remember, last hour of the match, we're fishing for carp. You've got to start feeding some bait. Those fish are hungry. As the, as the session wears on, the fish are going to get hungrier and hungrier, and they're going to want to feed on more bait. So, the guys that have been fishing maybe a feeder to the island, unless they've ramped it up a little bit, they're the guys that are starting to struggle. Now, there's a couple of anglers further down on this bank that we're looking down. You can see a guy just netting a fish there. They're making the most of their long feeder or bomb swims. They've been feeding lots of bait with a catapult, feeding eight mils. A couple of anglers are catching a pale of Agadano as well. But that's where their space has been. That's where they've started to catch fish because that's where the carp have collected. There's been quite a few anglers who have fished short poles all day along that bank. And what you can't do is you cannot keep plugging away on the same line, catching nothing. Because those fish are just naturally going to back away from you. You've got to be on the right line at the right time. Now, though there's anglers down there, They've ramped up the feed as the match has gone on and they've made the most of that area, probably 25, 30 metres out, that has been left quiet really. So in this last hour, hour and a half, that's when they've started to catch the fish. Now, what they're not doing, we've mentioned it, is they're not feeding very lightly. They're feeding really heavily. Eight mil pellets, catapulting them in, feeding loads and loads of bait. There's not any, any room in the last hour of a match during the warmer months the feeding lightly, you've got to be really aggressive. Now, let's talk about this angler here, Dave. Dave is a fantastic rod and line angler, and you can see he's not got a pole set up, but that doesn't stop him from fishing close range. Just see him chuck out there. We've just had a chat with him. He's just had five or six fish down that long sweeping margin that he's got. This is all about swim management because. Dave, although he's catching fish, we've still got probably 45 minutes left of the competition. You can see that long sweeping margin he's got to his left hand side. And the trouble is, there's not a lot of cover there. Dave has just said to us, he needs to rest it because he's hoping that some more fish can gather. And he's almost doing it in instalments. He's almost, he's caught those four or five fish in his margin. But because there's no cover there, keeping the fish in that area, He's really wary about pushing those fish away. Remember, you cannot keep plugging an area. There you go, there's a few more pellets down into that margin. And because, look how brilliant, he's just caught fish, perfect. And because he kept hammering that margin, he was really worried that he's gonna push the fish away, and he felt, I just need to have a couple of casts somewhere else. Hopefully, some fish are gonna gather back in that margin, and I can have maybe the last half an hour, and maybe catch three or four more fish in the margin. So, it's your decision making that makes a difference and once you've committed to a spot doesn't mean that that is you for the rest of the day you can still nick an odd fish from from different areas of your swim but one thing i will say is you've got to manage the area of your swim that's had the least action as in fish catching action whilst being aggressive with the feed and making that last hour pay 
aggressive with the feed is the key. And hopefully, you go on to get, have a match-winning wave.